the topic for uh, today's session is uh, again global mega trends uh, technologies and covid uh, 19 impacting sectors so today uh, to deliver uh, the keynote, we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Mani James, uh, the Senior Vice President of Frost and Sullivan. And uh, Frost and Sullivan, uh, many of you would have know, it, known, it is a consulting firm involved in doing a lot of marketing uh, research for the growth strategy for various uh, uh, multiple, sec uh, multiple sectors uh, and uh, multiple industries to me. So uh, to, few, uh, to say a few words about our expert speaker, he has uh, 20 plus years of experience as a strategy ex CXO in advisory role and uh, multiple sectors in uh, various uh, geographies. And he is a futuristic thinker uh, uh, delivering complex projects uh, for both public and private sector organization. Spent uh, 12 years of uh, time uh, in African uh, continent, uh, supported number of clients in uh, developing uh, various uh, growth strategy, uh, strategy for African countries. And uh, over 19 years of experience in uh, consulting experience, having worked with clients with North America, Southeast Asia and Middle East Asia. So his uh, areas of expertise is uh, uh, developing strategy, implementation uh, and go to market strategy. So very happy to have you here, uh, sir, on behalf of ICT Academy and the uh, entire education uh, committee, uh, educa educator community across uh, India. So we are happy to have you here uh, for this uh, today's session. I will hand over the session to Mr. Mani James uh, for giving his uh, expert session for next uh, 50 to 50 minutes to one hour. Thank you, Mr. Saravanan, for this uh, lovely introduction. Um, firstly, let me greet you all my all the educators. Um, it's, it's a pleasure speaking to you all um, on this uh, topic of uh, global megatrends, technologies and COVID-19 impacting sectors. Um, so um, thanks for the introduction again, um, Mr. Saravanan. So what I have, uh, I've kind of uh, looked at this from a perspective of how do you prepare the education sector for the new normal? And I said, uh, hashtag uh, the future of education. So um, you could, uh, you could see the you can see the breadth of how we are going to be talking um, and covering this topic today and uh, you will see that uh, uh, I have uh, in this um, session I'm trying to um, bring you certain aspects that I have been picking up around the world uh, as part of my 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 job role where I interact with many companies uh, many universities around the world I um, I discuss and I am I'm, I'm part of a number of different global advisory committees on supporting um, the transformation so to me uh, what is COVID done to all of us is that we are now looking into a point of saying how do we transform ourselves so uh, you can follow all my um, discussions on uh, my LinkedIn page, uh, which I have listed here for you. And um, I'll, I'll be very excited to take any questions that you uh, that it comes along way. Even if you don't finish this topic today, if you have to uh, give me a, a buzz on LinkedIn, I'm more than happy to uh, talk to you. So, what we will cover today, I'll give you a little bit of introduction of what I'll set you the context of what I believe is very important as an educator. Uh, what you need to know uh, from and what are some of the key top mega trends and technologies that are disrupting business? So why am I talking business is because I mean purely for the fact that I want you to come. I'm coming from a pure business background. So I want to tell you educators saying, look, what are some of the things that are happening in the end market or the likely to change in the end market that you will um, you will have to prepare yourself and hence prepare your students and the, the future communities for that. And while we are talking about that, the important aspect of what COVID-19 has done on to sectors uh, in India. I'm, obviously, this is global. Then I'm going to bring it home down to India. And then I also talk a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing around what are the technologies that are likely to disrupt classrooms. And I'll give you also a sample of a sector, uh, how it's transforming and what are the kind of future jobs that you can expect to see and as a result, as an educator, what you should be thinking about uh, teaching your students and also preparing yourself for. And then we'll take some questions and answers. OK, let's get started. So a little bit about Frost and Sullivan, what we are and how we do. I know Ms. Uh, Saravan introduced us, but we are a leading research and consulting firm. Uh, we are in existence for 40 plus years. 
uh, 40 plus, 60 plus years uh, apologies and 40 plus offices around the world and what we do is as a part of our job what we do is we help companies and organizations prepare for the future what do we do how do we do that we we track uh, quite a variety of um, industries and we kind of understand what are the interplay between trends and technologies and what likely are going to be the growth uh, that's going to happen in a specific sector and how would our clients need to be prepared for such eventual future. Um, so as I said to you, how do we support? We provide insights and trends and technologies. Uh, for example, we cover close to 38,000 product categories, about 12 global mega trends and 50 technologies, which by the way, is filtered down from about 2000 plus technologies that would disrupt industries. And uh, we deliver transformational growth strategies, which is to support organizations with a transformation agenda, because we know that such a transformation, while looking at what you're doing currently, be very difficult for you to imagine how this future would play out. And we talk about how do you can strengthen your operating structures? How do you focus on emerging new opportunities? Uh, if you want to talk about um, some investment support, how can we bring in investment? We can, uh, so we work with companies like Unitype, uh, which has got some excellent uh, capabilities in bringing global uh, universities or global organizations for tie up. And uh, of course, most of the point now we're talking about is digital transformation. How do you support in implementing your digital and market form and platform strategies? Uh, so that the context of why I'm here is because also the fact that we do quite a wide variety of industries. So we understand uh, how uh, the the opportunities across these different sectors play out. And I know most of the educators today are from the digital transformation space. So um, I mean, I'll focus more on that today. And uh, I'll take a moment uh, for you to see this because there is a very important message that you want to understand. Because even before the pre-COVID started, there was a big difference uh, in terms of what these industries were or these uh, companies were going through. So if you look at uh, from the right side, if you look at companies like BSNL, Jet Airways and Walmart, and you look at these companies like Geo, Indigo and Amazon, uh, you'll see that there is a big change in which how these sectors of industries, these companies are actually uh, struggling. We know how our industry in terms of the BSNL and uh, is, is struggling. Jet Airways has gone bankrupt. Uh, Walmart is struggling with their um, with their kind of market share. But on the other hand, if you see companies like Geo, uh, who have now come up with a very different business model, they have in, in, in imbibed technology in a big way, uh, and that has that has given them a very interesting uh, foothold uh, in the market where they have almost reached uh, 400 million customers in no point of time. And uh, again, Indigo, uh, they have a very simple, low frills, no cost airline policy, uh, which again was a business model on time. Uh, so they have they also captured the markets in a big way. Uh, and again, Amazon of all of this is a, probably the best example of technology that I could speak think about. And this they, they do everything. They, they there is a backbone of technology. So these companies on the right side or if you say which way you see it here these companies on over here they're kind of facing this kodak moment because they've actually seized they've seen some of the opportunities they were there in front of the eyes and uh, they failed to seize this uh, opportunity and that's where i think um, the, the megatrends uh, and the digital transformation comes into picture so as frost and sullivan i have been particularly involved you know quite a lot of these um, these initiatives where we have been trying to understand what will these mega trends or the global transformative forces that will define the future of that will impact our business society economy culture and personal lives i don't think anybody um, on this listening to this webinar is using a tape recorder or a cassette player that we used to use many many years ago uh, we don't have these dial dial in um, telephone uh, phones anymore so we've all gone digital it's all smartphones. so again the same way you look at what will be a future of uh, mobility what will uh, sustainability and circular economy look like in the smart scheme of things what does connectivity and convergence um, uh, mean to the world i know our my one of my colleagues yesterday covered 5g but 5g in this context is more more than what is going to start changing a lot of things in the industry as we know it and 
uh, many of our current uh, challenges that we speak about right now with COVID is, belongs to the health and wellness and well-being. And I think the future is world, uh, the move is worlding towards a point of how do you actually innovate to zero? You want to get it to zero accidents. You want to get it to zero insurance. You want to get into a zero liability. How does this all uh, work out? And new business models. So this is a this is a paradigm shift in which how companies are doing business now. So if I this uh, the slide that you saw earlier, it talks about how some of those business models, how some of the technologies have really disrupted and collapsed certain markets and how they are transforming. And uh, from our for the topic today, you look at uh, how at Frost and Sullivan we look at uh, some of the top 50 technologies. So uh, it's very clear from across all of this, some of these technologies that we have been predicting, uh, they have been pretty early stage. Let's say talk about 10, 12 years ago, and now they have all become mainstream. So what we also do is we look at some of the technologies that are likely to impact us over the next 10 to 20 years. And we go through an exhaustive process of identifying 2000 plus technologies and we go through a filtering process and we come up with the top 50 technology every year. So this is our latest edition for this year where we see how some of those um, technologies are playing out. And you can see a majority of them have a, a big focus on uh, transformative communication technologies and not just in the ICT domain, but if you look at a lot of this um, healthcare or you look at microelectronics, you look at sensors and instrumentation, even advanced manufacturing, you'll see a quite a lot of integration that happens uh, with regards to the, the digital technologies. So quite uh, an, an important area where you will also see that even in the health and wellness space, there is a sizable amount of um, digital technologies that are involved. So this gives you a, a perspective of what are some of the whole gamut of technologies that are likely to hit uh, the uh, the markets in a, in a in a space of time but some of the key technology trends that you asked me what we need to take note in the current um, setup I will say is look at uh, things like big data blockchain AI which I'm sure you're already doing 3d printing is moving more towards uh, 4d and 5d printing already uh, we're talking about circular economy resource scarcity you also have mind reading machines a lot of virtual currency cryptocurrencies autonomous robots have become quite reality uh, AR and VR are obviously in a big way right now and IOT, IAOT, powered Xcos, uh, Skatons, uh, deep sea mining, nanobots and 3D and 4D printing as I alluded to. So so these are some of the, the key technologies um, I would say that you need to take note of. Uh, I will, if anything that you took away from this uh, discussion today, it's one thing that I want you to understand that there is a big play between technology, megatrends, business models, industries, and innovation ecosystem drivers. So if you look at the, the top layer over here, this talks about the technology cluster, right? So I, I showed you the clusters that we have been tracking and kind of the, the different technologies that go with that. In the middle layer, second layer, you'll see that these are the top 12 megatrends that I mentioned to you. Uh, so what are the big trends that are gonna drive business in the future? And then you look at the, the third one over here. This talks about the different business models. So how will a, a normal, uh, the, the, the normal business model that we adopted, how will the technology and the megatrend drive a new business model altogether? And this could just impact in the fourth layer, you will see the industries that this could have earlier on what was restricted to just one industry. Now, if you move the kaleidoscope, you will see that there is a huge amount of uh, impact that will happen on the different industries. And again, we have different innovation ecosystem drivers. And I think um, in my view, um, the future belongs uh, to the to educators like yourself who have joined this call, uh, who will play a major role in the innovation ecosystem drivers. So my work with different universities around the world where we involved in different transformation programs it's clear that now they actually want to see themselves as a innovation ecosystem driver because as a result, they have a, a big ability to work alongside governments, work alongside R&D centers of different companies, but also impact 
the different segments of the innovation value chain and i think this is a very crucial uh, element what uh, the educators are going to play in the future going forward so remember this innovation kaleidoscope because this is i think how uh, you could use this as a perspective in your own work that you do to try and find out how this are going to be relevant in the future that you're going to be creating whether we like it or not uh, the fourth industrial revolution is clearly here and uh, you can call it industry 4.0 iot 4.0 digital transformation whatever you, you want to call it i think uh, we are truly into this and if at all anything covid has done to us it is actually going to act it has accelerated our effort into this big time uh, when i when i look at uh, for the education sector and i look at the industries uh, so a couple of a uh, couple of interesting ones here is that you have companies that look at an si8 model which is a proprietary one at frost and sullivan what we look at saying how we help companies identify their strategic imperative why they exist and i can i can impact the same you can look at the same impact that will have on the education sector all of this uh, is going to be pretty relevant to our education sector as well so you you might be listening in you might be a dean of a college you might be a, a university head of a university you might be educator but you can look at this in terms of saying how the end customers are going to change so the customer value chain is going to change different mega trends are going to impact you no doubt um, the lot of digital consumption of uh, knowledge uh, is going to be the key how you going to introduce ar vr or the technologies that are going to disrupt some of your uh, thinking right now i mean you will have a lot of internal challenges without doubt on how you deploy some of these changes uh, universities around you are changing so it's not just you who are adapting to those changes a lot of internal uh, a lot of your competitors are also doing the same thing and uh, geopolitical change is something that we are predicting the situation right now like covid uh, where we are sitting with covid and uh, it's a, it's it's a force majeure that is beyond your and mine um, comprehension we can't control it but we have to adapt ourselves i spoke to you about disruptive technologies and i think the the important one here is a lot of industry are converging so traditionally what we had like an automobile engineering mechanical engineering or electronics engineering it might still exist in that context but i i have an interesting slide at the end where i can tell you that the future doctors can be actually engineers uh it's it's pretty much a reality and is already happening in many parts of the world so the industry convergence is going to change you in in a very different perspective and uh, lastly i talked to you about innovative business models so as an university as an as a uh, college what are you going to introduce as new business models we just be the traditional b2c models are we going to go back to the name normal once we have come out of covid are, are you going to think about some different business models to keep the universities more relevant i think this is where transformation uh, the work that i do with many universities around the world and in india this comes into the picture so i as i, I showed you this uh, innovation kaleidoscope and one thing uh, I, i can tell you right now um with a lot of confidence and i'll show you some evidence uh, shortly is that it doesn't matter um, how old your company you are how big as a company you are but if you're not able to embrace technology and this again goes back to the universities yeah i have to in this context what i explain i'll say everything is in relate in relation to the university itself every company uh, company or every university is going to become a technology based one Uh, and it's all based on the outcomes that you deliver it doesn't matter you i have 50000 students if i have 5000 employees i've got 100000 employees doesn't matter what outcome you deliver that's going to be important um we did some study uh, um over the period of years and trying to understand uh, from a bank which is uh, jp morgan chase we're talking saying we says we're not a bank anymore we are a technology company he said that even back in 2016 at the end of 2016 he said that to us and you can see even by the end of 2016 you can see the number of patents all these tech, um, so called banks and financial institutions have filed for and you can see the the kind of areas which they have been focusing on quite heavily so it's pretty obvious that um, the there is a big importance of technology to the banks and uh, to me uh, there are about six important technologies which i believe are pretty relevant um, text and i think that these are and how the 
the the amount of data the the, the consuming of the data i'm sure covid has increase the propensity of the the or the intensity of the the way that you consume data when the global traffic data uh, what we saw in zeta bytes we thought in 2020 it will be about 34.1 and you could see almost in 5 years it would have quadrupled to almost i think this should be in the region about 150 already now and this is a big market that we see around the world and uh, you'll see that uh, the the innovators innovators that are looking in terms of saying what will be the the key elements of how companies are filing patents and you will see the the big big ones in in ai uh, these are the companies that are actually predicting so much of patents that they have filed i mean they in microsoft is of close to around 900 plus and you will see um, uh, business ibm we have google we have qualcom intel amazon xerox so you'll see that these companies have been quite steadily focusing on filing patents uh, and that's a very clear evidence to show you that companies are taking these technologies pretty seriously i'm sure my colleague yesterday um, must have covered this but I'm, I'm just for i to want to let you know that why uh, 5g is not just also seen only as a technology but it also is going to be a big game changer with regards to different business models so the machine to machine interaction that we believe uh, is going to be uh, pretty heavy quantum computing that's going to shift towards what we which you going to have this all have got lot elements in terms of the delivery of the various services this is going to be a huge uh, impact what 5g is going to bring on to the table so 5g i uh, the, the, even from a health aspect from what we are today i, I can tell you that there is quite a lot of um, 5g trials that are already underway with the different uh, bands and that you could see around the world uh, except for some few countries in africa which is not um, given it so far but you will see most of the countries have actually trialed the spectrum brands and this is a huge um, what across to 1 trillion opportunity which is actually a 5g enabled output in healthcare i told you about outcomes so i think healthcare itself in this industry is going to have a massive impact so what kind of digital technologies as an as an educator as an innovator what are you thinking about delivering services into healthcare sector is a massive jump that you could think about and the last one i talked to us about the um, automation it's again a, a big market and uh, it's a, it's a particularly a very interesting slide that i put up here for you because gone are the days then we were doing early warning systems in 2011 talking about getting your hands off a little bit in traffic control the you're taking your because we started to slowly become autonomous and uh, one fine day you're going to see that in 2030 you're going to a full autonomous driving which almost is a brain off so literally you're going to find a computer on wheels and uh, this is going to do the the bulk of uh, what we expect the automation to take place so i've set you the context in terms of uh, how uh, the 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 global world is changing with regards to the mega trends and with the different technologies that enables the uh, the different changes uh, and I, i like this quote from uh, sir albert einstein where he says that in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity so covid brings you that uh, crisis and also it brings you a new opportunity horizon so um, i had prepared this extensive uh, um, uh, deck uh, that i wanted to show you today but in interest of time i'm not going to go through everything but what i'm going to focus today is you need to understand um, as an educator how the economic scenario is going to change i think um, it's very relevant in the context of how you will plan uh, but also i will show you uh, not all these industries but i'll definitely give you an impact of what i believe is on the ict sector in india and what it means to educators like yourself uh the change growth environment the economic environment uh, i think from a global standpoint the recession is for, is for real is for clear that we are actually are going through a global emergency scenario right now where we going to have some severe negative um, impact so already we know that close, almost close to 80 plus countries have registered um, 5000 plus cases uh, by the mid of may and uh, 35 countries will register 10000 plus it's already gone way beyond that india has reached the 1 million or oh, sorry 1 lakh mark today uh, which is a grim outlook for us so this is obviously a 
a recession based scenario that we talk about and in in india is going to mirror something very similar uh, to the growth uh, of the global growth and i believe that by the end of next year q4 2021 we should get back to about uh, 3 to 3% uh, growth uh, growth rate provided that we don't have another wave of um, coronavirus that hits us um so a lot of a lot of people a lot of governments a lot of institutions uh, have asked me um what is what do you do you think is going to be the the recovery do we have a v shaped recovery for a u shaped recovery i know from a computer science department uh, or from a ict based um, educator you'd be thinking what does it matter to me but i think there is a there's a big um, impact that is going to happen because i i don't believe that the market is going to rebound in in a in a 3 to 6 month period time it's becoming very very difficult so more it's going to flatten out and it's going to give us a u shaped recovery but i think there is loads of um, examples of how technology has been used uh, to to stage this recovery so which is an important um, which brings you to uh, an important focus on what you do so um, i've kind of listed here um, a list of um, industries that i believe which contributes heavily to our uh, um, gdp in india uh, but uh, and what kind of impact does that bring to uh, the gdp so predominantly the the real estate the hotel and transport manufacturing construction these kind of uh, sectors have um, contributed this much uh, a significant portion almost 54% 55% to the to the gdp so um, the uh, the medium impact or sectors that has got a very limited contribution so i think from that standpoint um, education and all these other sectors have got a very medium impact on the um, gdp right now and you'll also see uh, quite a lot of um, industries that we believe will struggle uh, for the for the next i think 6 to 7 6 to 8 months um, so all these industries on the left that you will see that um, that are going to struggle uh but i think there are the the industries that we are talking about today has got a tremendous future in my view uh, because these are all talk to do with it services high tech manufacturing high tech pharma that you going to go and you'll see all the thriving industries has got something very unique on something common is that uh, you're going to see that there is a big digital element to that we talk about digital media we talk about all the uh, kind of telecom providers they all the digital services i mean we are doing video conferencing we are doing web conferencing which wasn't a mainstream in the past but this is going to lead us to them and the uptake of digital payment portals e-commerce uh, e-retail uh, all all of the the things that's got to do with um, and the e, e and also to do with digital i think they are going to thrive uh, in the long term some industries uh, that will forever remain um, pretty they will they'll have very minimal impact on what covid does when i as i explained to you earlier on these are some of the industries that have got a heavy impact on um, uh, covid so these will all be the the mori bond industries uh, that we know will is going to struggle for some time uh, but we're going to have endangered uh, industries and the mortal industry so i think the the ict sector pretty pretty much um, falls between the immortal industries and the nirvana industries so again uh, from an educator standpoint i believe um, from your the focus that you're going to show to your to the areas that are going to be very important from my view is that you're going to see a, a huge focus for the future at least for the next 10 years uh is things like e-commerce online education fintech and digital media so you can see all of this um, services that are going to be pretty important uh, uh in not just from a revival of our economy but from a standpoint of how innovation is going to take place uh, in india going forward so if you are working on any of these areas or you're focusing or uh, your kind of innovation or research on some of these sectors or some of these areas i think uh, you are you are on the right track in my view and i think there is a lot of innovation that still needs to come out uh, from from what i can see so uh the kind of will go into the um um the impact of the uh, covid on the ict sector and specifically focus on what's happening in india at the moment um 
So there are a lot of IT services uh, that uh, that isn't um, going the way that uh, we are looking at the moment. So it was around um, 222 billion in end of uh, 2019. So I think the, it is going to witness at least a five five and a half billion dollar uh, production post in 2020. The ICT sector will be about 233 billion uh, in 2020. Uh, so which is going to be a a drop in what we think but i think there is a the reason is also because there is uh, because of the uncertainty there is going to be massive delays in it transformation projects uh, and also there is a because of the lack of spending you're going to see that, that the hardware markets on premise uh, collaboration security networking endpoints that might also see a small decline so you can see the the kind of um, areas that we had originally projected and how the the, the impact of the overall ICT market in India is going to play out. Uh, another major area, I think, uh, which is probably an opportunity for um, educators like yourself, is in that you're going to see as the challenges that are faced, is you're going to find very limited ICS, ICT resources uh, that are going to be there to meet demand. Why I say that is because there is a, a very critical requirement in terms of uh, trained and skilled manpower that will be required to service um, the, um, the significant uh, changes that you're having during the downtime and also the remote work. Remote work has become obviously a very unique uh, phenomenon to us. Uh, so this is going to this is going to be an important change and also the, uh, the the business continuity, the data center infrastructure management, backend telecom infrastructure infra. So these are all areas that are going to be a massive challenge for us. And uh, we also know there is a big roadblock um, with regards to IT services. Um, so that's that also will continue to be a main challenge and uh, we will have uh, sufficient and um, secure bandwidth because of the the way that we are the consuming data right now the ISPs will work with uh, they'll have challenges with network choking latency screen your network network and not not all consumers are going to have uh, the experience that seamless experience that we want them to have and uh, because of VPN connections there's going to be a huge uh, challenge on data sovereignty and data protection. And we also know that um, there's going to be a big delay in digital transformation projects uh, around uh, the world and specifically in India. So where does this bring me to the opportunities that are very critical for the success for the ICT industry? So one thing, it's, it's pretty clear that you're going to find an, a huge plethora of digital transformation business models. That's good. That's going to be very very important uh, for us to understand so companies are going to look for people who are uh, pretty good in product providing collaboration solutions they're looking for business intelligence tools who are stem for wi-fi security what kind of uh, all kind of cyber security endpoint security advanced threat protection solutions to make the remote force more uh, engaged so tcs has announced that by 2025 75 percent of their workforce is going to be remote all right so how do you actually provide solutions that will actually make this more resilient um, and again the second part i alluded to earlier on is going to be on uh, risk uh, security risk so anything on compliance and security risk is going to be a major priority for companies and you're going to find um, uh, rules like gdpr which was a big um, rollout in europe last year you're going to see a, quite a, a big splurge of um, compliance data um, on global uh, of your own personal data that's going to be there in some time for the uh, data sovereignty. So you can expect country like, uh, countries like us also going to start deploying very stringent um, privacy rules. And um, again, explain to you there is a big information security tools and services that we need to assess the internal external risks. So. You're going to start focusing on cyber security. Uh, this is going to be an important area. Uh, the business models will become more contactless. Uh, it's like we're already starting, starting to see this more accelerate. So you will see the e-commerce uh, will be the key driver for it. And but again, healthcare, IT, and online health services uh, is already starting to see a massive jump. And um, and one important area I think which is pretty relevant to our discussion today is about e-learning applications and services uh, how do you uh, make this more as a gamified model 
uh, to see uh, the momentum in genres in Z. Uh, we know of all the online apps that have come on board and how they are uh, developing uh, solutions. But you also have now um, so solutions like Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams and Skype and Google Meet that are also coming on board uh, to support these kind of e-learning modules. So how do you actually deliver a seamless experience uh, which is, I think, more to do with the business model itself. Um, accelerating digital payments, uh, I, I told you earlier on with e-services, will become uh, the critical component of our uh, life going forward. And uh, what I also believe is that now this will be a chance for government uh, to modernize the services. And uh, it will become that we'll have a lot of uh, areas such as predictive analysis, big data, uh, quantum computing, those kind of the areas that is going to be a, a big surge going forward. And um, as I said, there is a there will be a focus on modernizing governmental applications, and which will have AI and big data is critical. So already we have the Aragya Setu app, which has been implemented by the government, that is already having a layer of technology imbibed in us. There are three levels of layer of, of security and technology that has actually been used uh, in our fight against COVID. It's already happening, so I think there is a uh, there is a massive opportunity for educators to start thinking around how do you actually uh, prepare yourself and also the students around these areas. Uh, so I alluded it to earlier on, but what are some of the technologies that could uh, that will with the business disruption in the ICT sector? Um, I think it's going to be have few um, huge amount of video conferencing collaboration. Uh, I, I spoke about this just now, so. The business tools that will measure productivity and provide effective reporting uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be the the key way going forward uh, you're going to have um, a higher in increase of usage of ar and vr uh, for example there's a company called htc uh, they've already announced that they will be holding a ecosystem conference via uh, virtual reality in march 2020 but it has been postponed to may 2020 uh, software um, defined technologies so you will have a huge amount of um, uh, applications that will that will saw concerns like demand scaling. How do you manage uh, traffic and network? So there are software that will be defining to do this. Uh, increases the the uh, efficiency of the companies. That will be a huge uh, important area. And again, we've all spoken about 5G. Um, so how the huge hand bandwidth and the high speed. And the low latency will allow for a lot of uh, changes in the way that we will see the future going forward. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I want to give you a little bit of a hint of what companies are doing um, with regards to uh, the, the strategies, they, what kind of response. So for example, the, what's kind of a challenge and what companies are doing at the moment. So it will all move uh, in the times of area of looking to saying, how do I support and provide critical data so, uh, for example, Microsoft developed a healthcare bot uh, that is powered by uh, the Microsoft Azure and it actually helped to screen patients for potential infection and cure. So, um, so that's, it's globally, uh, they, they provided this to the CDC and public health organizations to do it. So, so you'll have more and more such companies that are, um, that are going to use technology um, and even uh, from our own uh, example, when we found that the Indian government websites were facing challenges on handling queries from citizens on COVID-19, um, so this haptics AI-based uh, virtual assistant was helping the Indian government to uh, handle these kind of primary queries. So the first line of what customers came to was actually an AI-based tool. So you will see that um, all of the kind of um, uh, strategies or uh, solutions that have been provided by in response to the challenges. So uh, what I think what I'm trying to uh, bring home the point to you is that as a instructor, as an educator, what are you doing uh, with specifically um, uh, to, to think about some of the areas and solutions that you could uh, help pioneer and bring together uh, that could actually potentially solve some of these challenges. So um, some of the uh, the ones that ICT sector, in my view, it's going to be pretty, um, uh, just to sum up, I think the, the response strategies are going to be how 
you're going to modernize IT's infrastructure, how you're going to invest more in cloud services, AI, big data, security. These are going to be very, very critical in terms of the technology and what kind of improvements can be done on that. And online business models, we're talking about data protection and uh, IT and security and skill development, which I think that's going to be very, very, very crucial uh, in, the, in the talk going forward. So, um, I'm just going good on time. So we still got about, hello? Yes, sir, you can proceed, you can proceed. Okay, all right. So, uh, so what can uh, educators do to prepare for the, the new normal? So, so we have, as at Frost and Sullivan, we have been doing uh, quite a lot of work on um, uh, you know, the, this, this technology team that uh, that we have, and with regards to the to the the university um, kind of teams that we have, we have been looking at saying globally around the world. We have been trying to figure out what are um, some of the universities doing, and what would be some of the technologies that will be used to deploy uh, this going forward. So, from our global analysis, um, um, this we did it by the end of 2019. Uh, obviously, we have um, the massive uh, open online courses, the MOOC courses. I think that's not anything new anymore. I was shocked to see my son uh, who was going through a. Uh, he's, he's in the 10th standard. He was he's doing a uh, some something to do on uh, data scientist. He he was doing a, a, a an online course on Udemy. So if it's gone to that level, I don't think there is any any more stopping that kind of a model anymore. So there are new business models that have. It's almost kind of direct to student content sale. So along with uh, AI and AR and VR, if it's going to be more implemented, I think it's the it's the time that you're going to see that this the system is absolutely massively disrupted. Uh, we're going to have a more uh, personalized learning. So this is not from just from a corporate standpoint. I also know that there will be a significant value in the analysis of student data that you're going to collect. I know of many institutions. I've been speaking to a couple of uh, institutions even in India who have now said they can predict what kind of um, students um, learning is required based on the performance will they be placed or whether they will be uh, scoring what kind of marks so i think they are they are able to make it more direct and more personal to students which i think is very relevant uh, the way that we see going forward so it's a business model that will move from saying look i have this general class it's a one size fits all solution no but it'll actually more personalized and uh, it's it's very important that we start to think about a business model post covid how do we actually bring this uh, to our students uh, digital school services uh, again uh, this is a model that's uh, that will start to see a big splurge going forward because it's more about how do you manage the content and how do you manage this and the sector will continue education sector will continuously grow on that so another uh, set of uh, findings from our um, from our study was that uh, the AR and the VR uh, will be uh, massively implemented. Uh, it's already a, a big function or big part of what we have seen technologies have been adopted globally. Uh, that's purely because it's more um, it's more engaging to the uh, and more interactivity that brings into the education system. Uh, so the traditional higher education degree. It's going to start becoming more flexible in my view. Uh, maybe this is not a one that's immediately going to happen in India, but uh, globally we are starting to see this uh, is a big shift now. Uh, as I said earlier on, the data driven approach, uh, it's it's taking more uh, precedence now with uh, on testing and assessment. So you are going to have, there is going to be a cost and value of education are being, being re-looked at because classrooms that you have to bring a culture and social divide. Now, professional skill gaps are going to be due to the, the disruption that we're going to see that presents to institutions. I mean, IoT devices are being supported by cloud computing and big data. And I think having the AI capability uh, is going to improve this significantly. Uh, I, I alluded to the mega trends uh, when I started the whole conversation. So the, the mega trends of bricks and clicks that you have to have a physical building uh, or that's going to be there no more because bricks and clicks are, are going to be replaced by the traditional supermarkets are going to be slowly replaced by e-commerce. So I think the COVID has pushed us towards that. Again, the same way um, bricks and clicks and connectivity and convergence is going to divide 
uh, it's got to drive digital transformation uh, between students and education institutions. I think the fact that uh, we are having this conversation on uh, uh, over this um, uh, video conference or a web conference and uh, students are sitting at home and having delivered lectures on Zoom uh, or Microsoft or any other platform. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty clear that the new business models are emerging and it will disrupt the current um, uh, education system and uh, it will go a number of um, business to consumer channels. It's a traditional business to business or business to consumer landscape. So we have to be ready for this new normal in my view. And finally, uh, the Internet of Things um, is going to be a new computing paradigm, and um, where every physical object has a digital presence now. And you know how you can enhance these capabilities by bringing sensors and data to provide more effective education. So the, the evolution of IoT will also bring a more seamless learning experience, in my view. And then you can do it across the different platforms, be it your home, be it your smartphone, be it your iPad, be it your uh, 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 laptop, uh, desktop. So you're going to see this is uh, it's going to be available on the cloud as well. And I think a more connected learning ecosystem will prepare students for the workforce. Um, so the flipped classrooms are going to change and it's going to be more teachers. Uh, the, the role of the teachers itself is going to be changing. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example later on of how uh, one such um, institution is doing it uh, in, 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 our, in a neighborhood. So um, the, the predictive and adaptive analytic capabilities are going to change the way we're going to do the education in the future. And um, you're going to have the aggregating data of uh, sources in LMS and the education spectrum where they across these different stakeholders, people will be able to provide what kind of personalized services do I provide? How do I improve a specific student's uh, capability? So these are kind of technologies that you are going to uh, uh, going to see this increasingly adapted globally. So we did this, as I said, at the end of 2018, 2019, we did this and we predicted what will be the kind of the digital transformation of the education sector. So more relevance um, to what we are talking today but I think the, the critical part here is that you can see all the parameters that we just talked about now. It has got massive influence that, that we already know. So big data, blockchain, cloud computing, AI, machine learning, and quantum computing. These are, uh, in 2018, when we looked at, it was all possibly in initial stages. But I think um, the 2025, the outlook that we have, what we believe is that uh, big data and analytics will almost merge into AI, which is already happening. And um, it'll, it's going to start more into prescriptive and predictive uh, analytics uh, services, digital service data going forward. From a blockchain perspective, we believe that all the students will be encrypted data. They'll be stored on blockchains. Parents should be able to play in cryptocurrency. Uh, Micropayments, uh, we can pay for online tuition and resources. I think it's, it's pretty much a reality in some, some parts of the world right now. Uh, cloud computing, so the, obviously there is a big uh, shift towards cloud services. So how are you going to see the platform and the power of uh, machine learning on education data? Um, so I think one important uh, thing, of all, I've already seen this um, in action in a university in UAE, is that they already starting to become a, this is a lifelong journey you can map. Based on a personal, an individual, I can already predict, at least give you a saying, look, this is all from a lifelong from a student up until what I want to finish is saying my formal education and even so after I go into my corporate life I could actually figure out what should be my lifelong journey in, in study and uh, I think the the way that 5G is implemented and the different um, technologies are merging quantum computing or quantum computers will make a massive jump and you already see I've seen Google how they have shown that um, uh, what sort of tasks the quantum computers that they have actually brought onto this thing. And I think the, the machine learning will accelerate and provide you new insights into learning and teaching. So I have a set of um, slides, which obviously I'm, I don't, I don't in terms of time, I'm not going to cover through it all, but you can actually see the, the, uh, the impact of AI that has on the education sector. So you will see that, um, it's going to address a quite a lot of um, 
challenges. Like for example, in the current system, we have teachers who are burdened with multiple tasks. So you have to teach, you have to prepare for your lessons, you got to do assignment planning, you got to grade. So in this uh, scenario, I mean, all these teachers, I mean, as educators, you'll you'll have no time to provide personalized attention to students. So the quality of education is um, is also is an area that is going to be uh, challenged because of this opportunity. So the the AI will bring this um, the next wave of revolution in the education sector, in my view, and the AI will play a significant role in both changing the the face and the function of uh, uh, education by doing machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, and neural network techniques. So. So you're going to see this increasingly moving towards uh, this as a uh, concept going forward. And I thought many universities are already starting to adapt this globally. And uh, I'll give you an example of how I see AI as a, as a growth catalyst. Things. Just as in one, you can see how universities are pioneering with different um, companies and also uh, how the ecosystem, the R&D, the investments and the technologies, how they are being brought into this whole spectrum of just one technology called AI. And you could see the, the range of solutions that's been operate, offered by uh, AI for the different enterprise applications. So um, so it's it's been used to create different use cases across uh, different verticals and functions. Um, and uh, from a from a um, uh, future standpoint, you will say, look, what if I am in ICT educator space or from a or from a dean or for, say, chairman of a college or chairman of a university, you're going to look for it to say, how do I look at predictive analytics, pattern recognition, voice assistance, cybersecurity, the information and visual discovery, uh, virtual assistance, uh, robotics, so these are all the areas that you could actually think about. And I have actually got in every single area, I've actually looked at, um, for example, if you look at financial services, uh, you have got companies that are saying, look, what do I do specifically on financial services? So there is already a huge amount of use cases that is already happening. So you might be sitting in, uh, uh, in an ICT department and you could say, hey, what has got financial services got to do with me? So I think this is a pretty important area for you to think about because fintech in my view is going to be a massive uh, um, user of this technology going forward. What we do with the AI in retail already it's happening, but you can also see how uh, they can, they're going to use this more for customer engagement and chatbots and virtual assistants. How do you use AI in healthcare? Uh, there is already some amount of clear evidence that you have seen how uh, they are going about doing it. Industrial applications, again, you have companies like ABB who are using this for quality control, supply chain, predictive maintenance, and resource management. So, so think, those just don't think about AI as just a technology that is going to teach, but I think these have got wide ranging uh, applications and uh, implications for different end user industries, which I think is pretty critical to what you see now. So again, I've got um, a huge a lot of examples that you can see use cases that are um, that are coming on stream on how AI is being deployed in cybersecurity in, uh, and so many different areas, which is which, in my view, uh, is as an educator you need to take really take notice. So some of the opportunities for the future, um, I believe that uh, you should look at uh, thinking about chatbots. How do you help your students to think about VR? Uh, bringing about virtual assistance uh, and thinking about uh, cyber security uh, as an as an core area of what you do. So uh, the growth of AI in just is one example I wanted to show you is it's, it's pretty much as evident uh, is the growth is imminent uh, despite all the challenges that you're going to see uh, it's going to start a big uh, community of APIs uh, it's going to be more invincible in innovation that you can see here right now and the collaboration uh, that you will see. This is where I think um, the educators like yourself, universities, they're going to become the critical piece in this whole ecosystem, which is what I'm so much excited about because um, you have the, 
large and small companies, the academicians like yourselves, universities, they're going to collaborate and work together to enable AI to reach its truest potential. I think we're only starting to see the the beginning of what it can do. Uh, but I think the this again is a is a challenge globally. But I don't necessarily think it's a challenge for universities because you can use this as a big opportunity for yourself. And maybe you are in an educating space where you're actually looking at saying how much of do I research. Uh, so if you look at there is a huge challenge in terms of um, AI experts that you're going to find uh, this going forward. And I think uh, personal and projects from academia to corporates, you're going to companies are going to be wanting to look at you as educators who could actually give them this kind of perspectives. And um, how will AI become the new mantra uh, and the, how the big data will indicate the endless possibilities. So I will probably uh, skip this for now but i think the the uh, the critical one i wanted to focus to you focus with you here is um on the fact that um on the fact that um you know in a with a with the government agency and with the university uh very recently and we were trying to figure out if uh if we just take it from a healthcare standpoint we were trying to understand what will this new market ecosystem for the future look like what will be some of the new jobs uh, that will start to emerge, right? And what the universities of future will need to teach its students, and maybe also from a faculty standpoint or from educator standpoint, what you need to know uh, in this context. So I'll I'll give you this bit detail. So, for example, you take blockchain, right? So you could say, look, from an uh, as from an ICT standpoint, you could say, okay, in, from blockchain, what would be the use cases for healthcare? And what will be the type of companies that will emerge in the system? So you'll see there is a health data scientist. You could have an IoT business analyst. You could have a deep learning expert or a patient assistant or a blockchain engineer. But you also see the types of companies that will start to emerge because of the way the, the market ecosystem is going to evolve. So you're going to have companies that are actually going to do just internet medical of things. Uh, you're going to have a um, lot of... Um, service providers on blockchain and consortiums identity management health data exchanges so for this line alone what as a university that you need to teach right now so i'm not saying that you're not teaching right now but i think there's more emphasis that you're going to see on how do you provide these kind of use cases on let's say you got to think about imp improvising on machine learning uh, how do i do cognitive computing how do i teach unique identity and identity protection and digital identity methods, de decentralization of IoT, or precision medicine practice and new business models. So it's no, for the, as far as a student, as far as an educator to come out and say how we are actually going to see this as an opportunity for our students and for us to do a lot of research on, I think that's pretty important. Uh, during the beginning of the conversation, I mentioned to you that um, the future uh, doctors could be engineers. I wasn't way far off because I can tell you right now uh, in Estonia uh, and in some parts of um, a, um, UK, we are starting to, starting to see robot doctors uh, being uh, deployed big time uh, where we have um, areas like robo genomics, robo hematology, big data, statistical analysis and robo anatomics. And you have many health IT firms, robotic companies, and diagnostic companies, insurance firms who are starting to emerge in this area. And most of uh, the areas that we need to teach right now or may or may not be being there right now. But this is how uh, one such university that we have worked uh, with uh, globally, how we have helped them understand what should be this kind of new areas they should be focusing on because that will become the big need of the heart in terms of their own transformation how they need to bring about this. So uh, to me, there is an important lesson um, or important message I want to give you all educators. Um, you're doing a phenomenal job, but right now you got to say, look, uh, from, from your own personal standpoint, you got to say, look, how do I make this more relevant in terms of the, the future going forward? Uh, maybe there are things that you have to kind of specialize in going forward saying, look, I'm going to do this specific AI based um, uh, so, um, research that will help on a specific application 
across multiple industries, or you could choose a specific industry, which is, I think, very important. And also kind of to prepare your curriculum, prepare the kind of um, courses that you will prepare for your own students and saying, how can you help them prepare for this eventual future? Because I think the, the future belongs to those uh, students who actually will have these kind of uh, improved skills. Uh, it's going to be very difficult. And I know there is a big infrastructure problem that we have, um, not just in India, I'm not just talking about India, around the world. So, but I think this is where the world is moving towards to. And I, as I told you in the beginning, some of these mega trends are trends that we, you and I have absolutely no control about. Okay. So these are um, trends that are transformative in nature. And whether we like it or not, these changes will happen. So I want you to uh, pay some uh, important and a very uh, critical attention to the fact that how as an educator, you're going to start shaping not just your own journey in educating, but also you are preparing your students for the future. Uh, one such method I think that you, you could deploy. I mean, I know in first from your students uh, from your university, uh, what I have used uh, very successfully uh, in my business life and also with number of universities globally uh, and regionally is that uh, the usage of design thinking. So how do you actually um, uh, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test and implement? And how do you bring those kind of um, uh, design thinking techniques uh, to your own college uh, spectrum? Because you could see, you could break that down saying though there is a mega trend. You could break that down into a micro trend and you can see, okay, now what is it? What are the different technology and business implications it has, it has for the university? And from there, you could say, look, look at from an end user and the users. And like I say, what will be the the kind of um, requirements that they would need in the future. Then you could define the problem. Uh, you can come up with different ideas. Um, and then you start to develop a prototype. You test it and then you implement it. And while you're doing this, so you will have many ways to make sure that you're continuously learning alongside the process and also bringing together this kind of a um, uh, and an, an, an result that will be more transformation oriented in the future. So um, just to sum up, so we, we, we covered mega trends uh, in detail in terms of why these are relevant. Uh, we talked about different technologies uh, that are currently impacting the, um, the education sector, including the COVID impact that it has on ICT in India. And uh, I've also given you a little bit of a brief as to uh, if you are a faculty or from an university practice, how do you prepare for this uh, uncertain future? So uh, with that, I'm going to conclude my uh, discussion and uh, I'm more than happy to connect uh, with you on LinkedIn and please do write in to me. And I believe um, this, the future of education, uh, which is such a very important uh, flex point, uh, can only be enhanced. And I'm, and I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty certain that today I have given you some food for thought that will help you prepare for this future of education. Thank you. So thank you very much uh, for a wonderful and uh, elaborate uh, presentation on uh, all the future technologies, what we have been uh, speaking in this COVID situation. And in fact, you have done, uh, uh, the, if there was many messages from the chat window, it is uh, saying to share the presentation because a uh, lot of uh, surveys and a lot of uh, data points you've shared, which we could not uh, take it. As uh, we said, we'll have a recorded session of uh, this, but sure. uh, with your permission, we could also uh, share the presentation for the benefit of the educators across uh, so that they will also know uh, what is the statistics and data points which you have been uh, talking about sir thank you once again for on behalf of ict academy uh, to mr mani james sir uh, for your wonderful presentation. thank you for having me thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir.